and it's sponsored by City West, which is located at 3767 2nd Avenue. Their phone number is 1-800-442-8664. And they're open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. Uh, today is a pretty cool opportunity, I think, for some touring academy attendees, etc. cetera. Um, before I throw it to them, though, where are we? This is CICK, 93.9 FM, Smithers Community Radio, and today we have Orchestra North. So we're going to start off with Roxy and Simon. I'm going to throw it to you. Welcome. Orchestra is a lovely community. I'm from here, and I'm just so thrilled to bring some other musicians. How's that? Is that any better? So excited to bring some other musicians here uh, to perform for you. So next to me here on the violin is Simon McDonald. He's coming from Victoria, uh, where he uh, teaches at the Victoria Conservatory. And he and I are going to play a little bit of Bach for you. Um, one of the things that we have done every year is bring musicians here to explore work that we are interested in. And this piece is, this, this work is interesting for us because it, we're exploring what can be done when we play music that's not necessarily written for our instruments. Now you play instruments too, right, Meg? I do, yeah. I've uh, dabbled in uh, guitar, mandolin, and ukulele. Mostly I sing. Mostly you sing. So I think I feel like people who sing and dabble in multi-instrumental instruments know what I'm talking about a lot more. For example, you could sing a tune, uh, you could play that same tune on your mandolin, you could play that same tune on the guitar, and it's still that same tune. But the sound of it and what you're able to do with it changes kind of a lot depending on what instrument you play, right? Um, and I think especially when you go from something, say, like like tap, like you, like say the piano or, or plucked like a guitar versus singing the tune. Like what a difference that lends to the melody or lends to the tune. So that's what we're working on here. So this is a piece written for the piano or the keyboard, actually. It's by Bach. And it's from a really famous piece, a uh, work called The Well-Tempered Clavier. It's written for the keyboard instrument. So think percussive. And uh, what we've done is transcribed that so it's actually now played on stringed instruments. And especially for such a famous piece, it's we find it really interesting to see what different kinds of um, things can kind of come out from this. So it's also just great writing, so that's a lot of fun. So let us play a little bit of this. I actually want to show a little bit of how it's constructed first. So my part, it's just these noodly notes, and my part goes <laughs> like that. Now Simon's part sounds like this. Now you hear that the notes, some of those notes are the same notes, they're just played at different times, so there's, there's this interweaving kind of effect. Just listen to this, uh, to us playing that slightly slower, ready? And as we mix those sort of sounds and those instruments, you really feel that, that interlap and overlay. So that's what this little movement plays with. This is the C minor prelude of the Well-Tempered Clavier, transcribed for viola and violin. <laughs> Thank you. 
was awesome. Good breakdown of it. That was very cool. As as a non stringed instrument ukulele playing person, that was that was a cool breakdown. Yeah, and it's neat too. It's it's written for somebody who's an instrument like a keyboard instrumentalist. They would be in control of all the parts to this. So they play left hand, they play the right hand. And what has been interesting as we've been working through this collection of music is it really like we have to think as one mind sometimes. And that's also very exciting. So maybe before we do a little switch around here, do you want to just tell me, like, what is Orchestra North? Like, as, yeah. as succinct as you can so that we can get on to the next you music. Bet. But let's, let's give the folks a, a little idea. Totally. Orchestra North is a summer program, actually. So it's called the Orchestra North Summer Program, affectionately known as ONSP. And uh, that's, the, that's been a summer camp. We've run it since 2013. So this is the 10th. We're, we're, a, we're a decade old by now. And we've run a summer camp for a week at a time. Normally, it's, uh, it's been in Smithers for quite a few of these years. We actually did it this year in Prince George. And uh, we gather musicians, student musicians, amateur musicians, adults, kids, whatever level we gather professionals. And we just make like music together. So it's often divided into orchestras. We do chamber music. We do workshops. We do uh, technique class. <laughs> And and really, uh, we've had uh, like a lot of fun. And I love actually. I've got two students of the program here with us now. Uh, this is Tad Mao on the violin and Hannah Yin also on the violin. They've come actually from Prince George. We're <laughs> about to play uh, uh, some concerts. We're right now August the third, so August third and fourth and fifth, we will be playing concerts. And Hannah or Tad will be joining us uh, at those concerts along with Simon, myself, and some other musicians. So yeah, these these two have just participated in Orchestra North, and I'd love to just see if one of you would not mind telling us a little bit more about uh, about why it's why it's valuable to you to participate in a summer camp or summer program like this. Yeah. Sure, yeah, let's swap out here. <coughs> Tad, yeah, and make sure you're speaking right into it for okay. us. Yeah. So I think for me, uh, this summer camp, uh, like. For university, I'm sort of debating between going into STEM and going into music. So one of the biggest reasons I decided to go to this summer camp is to kind of help me decide like, if STEM is more for me or if music is for me. And I thought that after I did this camp, I would have an answer, but I'm still not entirely sure. <laughs> so I think I'm going to uh, just do a first semester in university and do STEM courses and see if, like, if I hate that, then maybe I'll just do music. and. If I'm not sure, maybe, maybe I'll try both. That's the thing. Dip your toe in. Yeah. See how it feels. Nice. And how about you, Hannah? And get right in up on that microphone. Sure. Yeah. Um, for me, it's really nice to be in the orchestra and get to play with other musicians of all different levels, different ages. But I get to meet new people, and we get to play new music together. And I think that's always just a super fun experience, just spending a week together, learning new music together, and getting to perform it. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing. So are we going to do another piece? Yes, absolutely, we will. So we're going to play uh, a piece that features Tad and Hannah, the two uh, players that you just met. And they will be joined by Simon McDonald to do um, a trio. Now, maybe, Simon, you would like to tell them a little bit about the composer of this piece and why it's such a special piece to do for you guys. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Simon, and I'm really thrilled to be here in Smithers, second time up here. This is an incredible town, and thank you, Roxy, for inviting all of these people to work here and in Prince George. We are about to play um, excerpts from, and then, if time allows, the complete work of the Capriccio for three violins in D minor by Friedrich Hermann. Uh, Hermann was a late 19th century composer who wrote really challenging, technically splashy works uh, for ver a variety of ensembles of instruments. I've found a few trios, and it's been a real pleasure to work on these trios with advanced students, uh, pre-professionals like Hannah and Tad. Um, we'll give you a taste of this before we play the whole thing, if I can launch right into what we've prepared. So it starts beautifully and slowly as though it's a chorale. Um, so for those in the audience that are familiar with musical terms, a chorale would be three or four parts all singing together and uh, sounding like one very thick voice or like an organ. So here we are, the very beginning, a small excerpt of this 
Herman Carpuccio. That beautiful and slow and thoughtful melody goes on for about two minutes. And then things take off. But before they take off, we're going to play you the fast part slowly. Um, again, another technical term. This is known as imitative counterpoint. But if you are not a musician, think of it as the three of us chasing each other around with the same line. So we'll start with a slow version of the very opening in the first violin played by Ted. Go ahead. And that will be followed by something eerily similar in the second violin, Hannah. Which is followed again by me, an octave lower. Now we'll play the same tiny excerpt slowly, and then we will play it quickly. Go ahead. So that is imitative counterpoint in slow motion. Now we'd like you to, to show you the same excerpt at the tempo that Mr. Herman has asked us to play. That goes on for about six minutes. Um, uh, my colleague Roxy mentioned technique class as part of what we did at the uh, summer music camp in Prince George last week. In technique class, we learn all about scales and arpeggios. And then we come to a, a piece like this by Mr. Herman, and we are very happy that we have practiced our scales and our arpeggios. If we have time, we could play the entire work for you now. And that's a thumbs up from the control room. <laughs> so I would say, here we go. Hopefully no problem. And if we get quite ready for this, this is, again, for those listening, this is uh, Herman Opus 2, Capriccio for three violins in D minor.
for the listeners at home, we are juggling some sheets of paper that have fluttered to the ground, just getting ourselves back together. Maybe, uh, who should I ask this question of? Simon, do you feel like stepping up to the mic for a second? Sure. What's your uh, favorite piece of the concert? Sorry, what's your favorite piece in the concert during the festival this week? Mm, that's a difficult question to ask because my favorite piece is almost always the piece that's in front of me. <laughs> that's perfect. The passion is imminent and then. But my favorite, I think, would be the Mahler, a Mahler piano quartet that none of us had known before or played before. Uh, Mahler is a very well-known orchestral writer who writes massive pieces for as many as a hundred. Actually, he's famous for the Symphony of a Thousand, which has, well, not a thousand people on stage, but very what feels like very close to it. And this is early Mahler for only four players, a piano, cello, viola, and violin. And it's quite sparse compared to his usual repertoire, but still emotionally expansive, as you would expect from Mahler. Thank you. Looks like maybe we're back together again. Sheets are where they should be, so I'll throw it back to you. Great. We will pick up where we left off. Okay. We will start from the beginning of the first section. Can you see through that? Okay. Take it away.
beautiful. Thank you so much. And the crowd does go wild, just very quietly. <laughs> That was wonderful. Thank you, all of you wonderful musicians. And uh, Roxy, are you going to do some playing as well some more? Well, I could play at the very end of this session, but sure. I thought that it might be we'll a nice We'll just have time. a little chat. Well, yeah, exactly. There's just so much going on. And I, I, I think one question I'd like to ask both of these student players that you just heard now playing really a very demanding uh, piece that was written by virtuoso composer and violinist himself. How does it feel, and this is to either you or ta uh, Tad, Hannah, Hannah or Tad, how does it feel to play this same piece twice? These two are going to have played six concerts in seven days. Oh, wow. uh, this session's that intense, and so how does it feel to do things multiple times? And what's your what's your experience with repeating this performance? Maybe Tad first, because you're at a microphone. Sure. Um, for me, like, let me think about it. You'd think that it would be like really exhausting playing the same piece over and over again and doing like six concerts in a row, but oddly enough, I don't, like, I almost don't notice it. Like, I kind of just play concerts, and then the next day I play another one, and then I kind of just forget that I played a concert, but I just have to prepare for another one, so it's, it's like, great. normal. Yeah. It doesn't exhaust yeah. you? That's wonderful. We just played a concert yesterday along the way in Vanderhoof. The day before, we did a big final program concert for the Orchestra North Summer Program, and a little bit before that, we played faculty concert, so they're al not always the same thing, but it is, it is in this evening, this is now um, Thursday evening, we, we will be playing a concert at Bethel Church tonight. So that, that's just a lot of things. Hannah, how's that been for you? Um, yeah, similar along the lines to what Tad said, especially <coughs> after two or three concerts, you start kind of getting used to it, it becomes more of a routine, but I think it's kind of nice to get the chance to perform it more times, because there's every time after I perform, there's always something that I think back and I think I should have done better and there's and I know now there's a uh, there's a chance next time I perform that I can work on that yeah great great ever improving I love that um Roxy can I ask you a question here you um can you actually tell us about the festival that you are all playing in this week absolutely so it's called the spirit of the north classical music festival it's a bit of a mouthful but what's nice is that we really get a feeling of what it is it's Gets, gives you a sense of what kind of musicians we have in the North uh, that, do, that are interested in classical music. Uh, we do feature several student performers, like the ones you just heard today, but mostly th the people that we feature are professional musicians. Um, we have several players that come from, uh, from elsewhere, like Simon McDonald here beside me. We also have Juilliard-trained uh, Yu Yu Liu, who's coming to join us for this festival this year as well on the cello. Um, so we have different players that do come in. And we, uh, we put together, we, I'm saying the festival committee, I get to be part of that too, <laughs> The festival committee puts together a series of, of sh concerts and shows that just sort of feature the enthusiasm about music and that brings um, opportunity to feature some of the northern musicians on a stage where we can really hear what it is they do. Amazing. Um, what is the sort of importance, I guess, for this festival? Like, wha why is it important that this festival happens? I mean, you kind of touched on it already, but why would you, why would you say that? Well, I do think there's fabulous musicianship in the north. Uh, our challenge really is geography, that we're so isolated from each other just because of the long distances between our communities that it's sometimes hard to, um, to, to know each other. It's hard to find opportunities for collaboration. Um, and I, I also think we are a little bit urban-centric when we think about quality, that we think, oh, this person must be good quality because they come from a name a big city, right? Well, that's, that's, we have so many wonderful, and I'm talking wonderful like national and international, uh, uh, like renowned players that do come from small towns, come from Smithers, come from Prince George, come, like we really do produce, I feel like more than our fair share of excellent, excellent musicianship. And it's only fair that we recognize those people, that we uh, give them audiences, and that those people feel like they can share who they are professionally with their own communities. So I feel very passionate about the importance of this. I love, as, as part of the festival organizing team, I love being able to sort of find musicians and feature them. We have this year, for example, Esteban uh, Figuero, who's going to be performing a whole concert of, uh, of, uh, um, of Chilean music on the guitar, flamenco guitar. Uh, he's 
he's brilliant and he's passionate about flamenco guitar and he plays at such a fine level. We're so excited to give him a stage, for example. We have also an artist, Mark Fowle, who's a visual artist. He'll be collaborating in this festival as well, doing a performance art and music kind of collaboration, a very improvisatory type of show. We have, um, you know, folk bands that love classical music and incorporating world music into things, playing at events like we're doing at Tense of is the group name, and they're playing in the Bulkley Valley Brewery, uh, so you can grab a beer and play there. Maybe next time in the lounge car session we'll get we'll get the the folk band to come in and, and, and play you a little bit of that. We have fiddling in the museum. We've got um, yeah a few classic events we do every year, but uh, but yeah, it just gives an opportunity for audiences here to really celebrate the musicianship that we have. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to wrap things up here. We're at our 30-minute mark. So this is Megan Brady. I've been your host for the Lounge Car Session on CICK 93.9 FM Smithers Community Radio with Orchestra North. So thank you to Hannah, Tad, Simon, and Roxy. Thank you very much, Megan. Thank you.